guys this is Tabiso Mangela and welcome to yet another week here at the fountain I'm extremely excited to welcome you today uh, as we'll be discussing something extremely important which is the thirst to worship so I believe that we all have a thirst to worship I believe that we all want to worship something bigger than us you know and an entity that is much more bigger than us an entity you know that is um, separate from who we are and that's why people often build themselves statues they you know they try to go through all lengths to try to worship because worship is important we are born to worship when god made us he made us to be the foremost the the, the most the, the most purest expression of worship that's why as believers we want to worship god with all that we have therefore it is important that we address a few questions uh, around worship that i'll be discussing here today using the book of john 4 because i believe that it is um, a template for how we should worship god and it addresses the questions the burning questions that we often have around worship where to worship you know am i okay if i worship as a lutheran is it okay if i worship as a methodist is it okay if i worship as a charismatic christian um all of these questions are important and i believe that these are the questions that the samaritan woman had for jesus and jesus really 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 outdone himself in how he answered those questions so i'll be addressing these questions today but before we go into the word um I would love to address something really important. Um, on, in October, we have a Mental Health Awareness Month. And I believe it is important, as, not only as young people, but as young believers, to be clued up around issues around mental health. Because I believe that we are all affected, whether directly or indirectly, whether we, 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 we suffer from mental health issues, or we know somebody who suffers from mental health issues. Therefore, it is important that we know we know issues around mental health that that is why it is important that we discuss it so please guys send me any questions that you might have on any of our social media platforms regarding issues that you'd like us to discuss around mental health so that we can answer your questions i'll have a whole lot of people who are amazing and who will be discussing these issues so please guys join me in discussing these issues so that we can be great and so that we can be effective and so that we can be whole as believers because we are three di dimensional we are the flesh we are the spirit and we are the soul and it is important that as we prosper in our spirit we prosper in our souls and we prosper in health and we become effective christians so please guys join me in the mental health awareness month so for some context are we going to read the book of john 4 verse 23 where jesus says to this woman but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father is seeking such to worship him so may god bless the reading of his word um let me take you back a little bit so in the book of exodus chapter 20 30, 32 if i'm not mistaken uh jesus is not jesus sorry moses is on the mountain and Moses is having a great time in the presence of the Lord where the Lord is just laying out a whole lot of issues from issues around um, how to lay out the, the tabernacle to the laws to how to address social justice issues in society and how society relates with each other. And Moses is, you know, inundated with the glory of the Lord. He's inundated with the information that the Lord is giving him. And he's in the presence of the Lord and he's having a great time in the presence of the Lord where he's just you know where God is revealing himself in a mighty way after they had come out of Egypt they had come out of Egypt as slaves and when they get onto the other side they have you know where God delivers them from Egypt um, through a whole lot of other mysterious ways where God reveals himself in such an amazing way so they get out of Egypt and as they are getting out of Egypt um, they come out as you know true sons of the living God they come out as a nation not just as slaves but they come out as a nation and because they are a nation they need a constitution they need a way how to relate they need a way how to relate not only with themselves but they need a way to relate with God because there's a way that slaves relate to each other and relate to God as compared to sons 
when we, we were sinners, when we were just slaves to sin, we related with God in a different way. But when we became sons, our, our level of operation with God, the rules of engagement change when we become sons. When you become a son, it's not the same when you become daughters. Sorry, when you become sons and daughters, it is not the same as though you were slaves. You get different things. Your inheritance changes when you become a son. That's why it is important how you behave as a son. And I'll use the word son as, you know, relating to sons and daughters. So as you become, you know, a child of God, um, your, your, your life changes. That's why your lifestyle can never remain the same because your position has changed. Your lifestyle needs to change because your inheritance has changed. Your lifestyle has to change because how God views you has changed. That's why your life has got to change. And this is what happened to them. They get, they, they get onto the other side. They have a blast. Um, the, the sister of Moses, um, takes out the tambourine and they start dancing and they have a good time and after they have a good time they go on a little bit further where Moses ascends the mountain and as he ascends the mountain God reveals himself and reveals his glory and God gives him the rules of engagement and God, God gives him the constitution and God gives him the blueprint of how this nation should behave so as God is busy you know with Moses and as God is busy dealing with Moses these people are getting agitated now. They realize that, you know what? Uh, we are thirsty, right? Um, we are thirsty for worship. So they convince each other that we need a little bit, you, we need a little God, you know? We need, uh, we need something we can relate to. We need something we can look at. We need something, you know, that, that we, we, we sort of are familiar with. And here's the thing, how we view God is largely dependent on our background. Personally, how I viewed God as a young boy was God as this white man, you know, who has a white beard and, you know, who's all powerful, who has, you know, all the power in the world. Because as a young boy, all that looked power, how I look at power was regarding white people and, you know, white men generally. White men were the true you know, expression of what power is. So as I viewed God, I viewed God as a white man, you know, who, who, who's all powerful and, you know, who has all, who calls all the shots, who wears this nice suit and who wears this nice tie or who wears this nice robe, this white robe. It is about how we view God. And these people's view of God was largely around them as slaves. Because they had been slaves, they had only viewed God as slaves. Therefore, they built a God that represented where they had come from. And you should be very careful how you view God. Because how you view God is about where you come from. Therefore, you should never let your past really dilute how you view God. Because how they viewed what God is supposed to look like was really, really around Egypt. So they started to take off their earrings. They started taking out their gold tooths. They started to take out, you know, their, their necklaces to build this God. And they built a golden calf. And they started worshipping this golden calf. And they started worshipping, you know, they started bringing offerings before this golden calf. Because they were thirsty for worship. They felt as though the God that, you know, Moses was talking about. They couldn't see him. They couldn't relate with him. Therefore, they couldn't really understand, but this God, how can we relate with him? How can we engage with this God? They didn't have a form of engagement with this God. And that is a struggle that we have often. We don't know how to relate with God because we can't see him. We don't know how to relate with him because our past has really diluted how we view God. And that is the predicament that they are facing in this instance. And Moses gets out of the mountain shining with the glory of the Lord and very upset. And as he's upset, you know, he's upset that these people don't understand what God had brought them through. They don't understand that God had brought them through all of these things for them to come to this moment and build themselves a little God. 
And that's the backdrop where I want us to look at this text. We look at this text where this woman perceives that Jesus is a prophet. And she says, I perceive that you are a prophet. But because I perceive that you are a prophet, I want to ask you a few questions. And she says, listen, some say we should worship in Jerusalem. Some say we should worship in the mountain. But I am really curious as a prophet, as the Messiah, as the one that we have been waiting for, as the one who promises to, to bring me thirst, as the one who's having a spiritual engagement with me, where should we worship? Where is the, where is the place of worship? And I think, I believe that many Christians would ask Jesus the same questions. That, listen, Milangene Zion is is what I know. It's how we worship God. Uh, or some would say, Nakigen Apostoli, and you know, Hoshapa di Kupu is how I worship God. And some would say, Umsalwan would say, uh, a charismatic Christian would say, I, Listen, Mina, what I know is, you know, a keyboard. I know that you worship God through a keyboard. And a Methodist would say, I am Minang Shai's Pamba to worship God. And the question that one would ask Jesus is, am I in the right place? Because what this woman was seeking is validation that the Samaritans are right in worshipping in the mountain because they don't have access to Jerusalem. Therefore, is God even in the mountain? Because it can't be. This woman was curious as to, it can't be that Jesus, that God is in the mountain. It can't be that God is only in, 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 in Jerusalem. Where is God? Where can we find this man? Where can, where can we find God? Where is this God? And Jesus has a very interesting answer for her. She says, he says to her, listen, a time is coming where you will not worship in the in, in the mountain where you will not worship in in Jerusalem because salvation is from the Jews but there is about there's going to be a shift that is going to happen where everybody is going to have an opportunity to be saved and when everybody has an opportunity to be saved where you worship God geographically will not matter because God will not be in the mountain. God will not be in the mountain. God will not be anywhere else. But God, because God is spirit, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we break this down, firstly, he's saying that once we engage with God, we can no longer engage with God on a physical level. Because many people have been frustrated through this lockdown that, oh my God, I can't worship God because I can't go to church. I can't go, you know, to church. I can't meet with the saints. Therefore, I can't worship God. And that's the frustration that I want to talk to today. That God is seeking to have a personal relationship with him. Because God is spirit. God is a spiritual entity. Therefore, how we engage with him should be on a spiritual level. That's why it doesn't matter whether. And is very important. The gathering of the saints is very important. And I will not downplay that because I myself as a believer, I go to church. I serve, you know. In, at a particular church but what is important for us to know here is this that god wants us to have a spiritual engagement with him god wants to have a one-on-one -on -one interaction with us because that's what the veil was torn for when the veil was torn from top to bottom he was giving us access to come to him as we are to come to the mercy seat through our spirit on a spiritual level not only on a physical level because all that was physical was a shadow of what was to come it was a shadow of jesus christ therefore once we engage with jesus number one we need to engage with him once we engage with god we need to engage with him in the spirit but secondly he says in spirit and in truth so the second one is truth the bible says in the book of uh john 16 that i am the way the truth and the life so jesus is the truth so as we engage with jesus jesus is the embodiment of the truth therefore once we engage with god through worship we need to engage with god through worship through jesus we need to engage with him in the full embodiment of who Christ is, in the full knowledge of Christ. Therefore, there are two levels of worship. And there are two levels where we should engage with God. Number one, in spirit. But secondly, in truth, which is through Jesus and in the full embodiment of who Jesus is. And that is what Jesus is saying to this woman. That, listen, the time is coming and the time is now where it will not matter about you are, you go, you, you know, or you are a, 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 
a keyboard person or whatever it does all of those things don't matter what matters is how we engage with god on a spiritual level because on a spiritual level that's our purest form that's the true representation of who god is also through jesus christ who is the truth so it is important that we worship God. Worship should not be a scientific issue. We shouldn't say, because you do this, 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 and that. You do this process and process and process and process, then you should go, um, you, you, you have worshipped God. It is principle. And principle is this, that spiritual things relate to spirituality. A spiritual God will relate with you on a spiritual level. That is our point of departure today. That as you are frustrated that obviously church is opening this week. But I hope it has shown you that all of these things that are around us are temporary. Churches can close at any time. But what is important is what we have here. And how we worship him here. And that is the most important issue. So next week I'll be discussing around issues around salvation. And how to relate with God. And how salvation is important and how witnessing is important so thank you guys for joining us today for our worship for our worship wave so remember that god is worshiped in spirit and in truth it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you are as long as your spirit is worshiping god then that's where we have worshiped thank you so much guys and have yourself a lovely day be blessed